Hello, my name is Dr. Mario Romero, and I am the clinical director for Romero Dental Seminars. In this webinar, I'm going to share with you a simplified restorative technique using Brilliant Everglow from Colti. I hope you enjoy. In this webinar, we will be talking about how to simplify shade selection during direct restorative procedures. A common trend today is the use of the so called single shade restorative materials. In this presentation, we will be comparing universal shades versus single shade composite materials from a clinical standpoint. So the question is, how do we select the shade? For years, we have been using the Vita Pan to shade match our restorative materials to the patient's tooth structure. The problem we encountered is that the Vita Pan was made to match Vita ceramics and not composites. Another problem with this shade guide is that it does not have a solid shade. It actually has a color gradient, starting in the gingival third with more saturation and finishing in the incisal third with more of a translucent effect. What the dental companies try to match is that middle third. Keep this in mind when attempting to shade match for composite restorations. Let me show you clinically what this means. If we were to position the Vita Pan A3 shade tab, as seen on the photo, you are trying to compare the more saturated portion of the shade tab to the tooth structure and not that middle third area that the dental companies actually try to match. This will most likely have you choose a lighter shade than needed. If we position it in this orientation, look at the shadow that it creates on the distal surface of the tooth you are trying to match. This makes tooth number 8 appear darker than tooth number 9 making it difficult to shade match. If we position the shade tab in this orientation, now we are trying to compare the area of the shade tab that has the greatest translucency and effects, which can lead us to choose a darker shade than needed. So the way that many authors, and myself included, recommend positioning the shade tab for composite shade selection is in a horizontal position so that our eyes can focus on the middle third of the tab, where color is uniform and has no effects like saturation or translucency affecting it. So today the question is, if we were to use a single shade composite, what happens with shade selection? Well, the answer is easy. It is not needed because you only have one shade to go for. But I have a couple of more questions that need answers, like for instance, how many of us really shade match prior to restoring posterior teeth? Do we really need to replace our universal systems for a single shade composite? What happens with the more demanding areas of the mouth, like anterior teeth? Can we really get away with a single shade there? Well, let's take a look at what the evidence has to say about which shade is most prevalent in our patients. In this study, they used the EC shade spectrophotometer to identify tooth shade in various groups of patients. The reason why they used the spectrophotometer instead of the visual assessment is because there is evidence to support this technique to be more reproducible. This study included 227 patients. Their age ranged between 15 and 72. Any tooth that was bleached or with enamel hypoplasia, fluorosis, veneered, carious, or restored was excluded. According to the manufacturer, two identical readings are required to ensure the accuracy. Teeth included were either right or left central incisors. The groups were divided by age groups, having the largest percentage of patients between the ages of 21 and 30, followed by 10 to 20, 31 to 40, and finally 41 and above. Let's take a look at the results. 78.5% of all patients were in the shade A type, 
That means that almost 80% of the times, we only have to choose from five shades. That is A1, A2, A3, A3.5, and A4. But let's continue looking at the data. 74.9% of all that fell in that shade A type were either A3, 36%, A2, 27%, or A1, 11%. And all group ages were represented in these three shades. If we analyze this information, we can see that more than half of our patients, 63.4% of them, are either A3 or A2. So at this point, my question is, do we really need a single shade composite if 63.4% of the times our patients are either A2 or A3? So with this information in mind, let's compare a universal composite system like Brilliant Everglow from Coltine to Omnichroma single shade restorative system. First, let's look at their translucency and opacity. Here we have two one millimeter cured composite discs. On the left, we selected A2B2 from Brilliant Everglow, and on the right is Omnichroma. It is very noticeable the more dentin like opacity with very little translucency of Brilliant Everglow A2B2 when compared with a, I would say, very translucent Omnichroma. Please keep this photo in mind when you need to restore a large class 4 or a through and through class 3. What happens when you look at 2 mm cured disc of composite? Now you are looking at a total opacity on the left side. We can appreciate that the black line is not visible anymore through Brilliant Everglow A2B2. And it is slightly visible through Omnichroma. This is why Omnichroma recommends using a blocker, which is none other than a very opaque white composite, underneath their single shade composite for class 4s and to mask dark tertiary dentin in class 1 or class 2 lesions. There is no need for a blocker when using Brilliant Everglow in any of their dentin shades due to their inherent dentin like opacity. Let me show you what this looks like clinically. In this case, I will be using Omnichroma to restore this large class 2 on tooth number 30. After placing my matrix band and wedges, I selectively etched, rinsed, and applied the universal bond by Tokuyama, which is a self cure bonding system. And then completed my restoration using a centripetal technique as seen on the photos. Here are the before and after photos where we can observe a slightly lighter appearance of the restorative material when compared to the actual tooth structure. Kind of like when you use an A1 shade. Personally, I think it is an acceptable match. It is important for me to say that both 29 and 31 were restored as well at a later appointment due to obvious reasons. Now let's look at what I consider my single shade for all posterior teeth I restore, Brilliant Everglow A2B2. For this patient, I am going to do multiple restorations in a single appointment. All preparations have been completed. We started out with deep margin elevation on tooth number 19 followed by deep margin elevation for tooth number 20. In both cases, we use resin modified glass ionomer to achieve that margin elevation. This was right after all restorations were completed. As you can see, for the smaller preparations, the restorations were almost imperceptible and a very good match for the larger restorations. Here is a side-by-side -side comparison of both cases, immediately after completion. I do want to mention that my observations and clinical experience with both materials is that the intrinsic opacity of Brilliant Everglow helps tremendously in regards to mimicking color 
when there is a lot of tooth structure missing, like in the following case. As you can see, tooth number 12 has fractured off to the gum line, and there is a large temporary restoration on tooth number 14 that we are going to restore using Brain Never Glow A2B2. Ideal rubber dam isolation was achieved after caries removal and cleaning of the substrate. A total edge technique was used in combination with one coat seven universal. Deep margin elevation completed, and two braided fibers were packed into the canal orifices. Here is a lateral view of the fibers. Out of this wax up, we created buccal and lingual matrices to help us achieve ideal dental anatomy of these walls. Here you can see both buccal and lingual walls completed, followed by the placement of a matrix band in wedges to restore the proximal walls. Once completed tooth number 12, we initiated restoration of tooth number 14. The first step was to elevate the margin using resin modified glass ionomer. Followed by adding Brilliant Everglow A2B2 until all contours were restored. And here is the photo after occlusal adjustment and polishing using the Shape Guard system by Coltin. Again, the restorations have the right opacity, even though for tooth number 12, it is a full crown that was restored. On this side view of tooth number 12, again, Look at the dentin-like opacity that mimics the surrounding natural dentition. So how would this work on anterior teeth? In this case, we plan to redo composite restorations on 8 and 9 due to fractures present on the lingual surface. And we plan to lengthen 6, 7, 10, and 11 so that all anterior teeth match in length. A retracted view just to show you the existing composites and the discrepancy in size with the laterals and canines. Just as a reminder, look at the intrinsic opacity with very little translucency of the 1 millimeter disc of Brilliant Everglow A2B2 on the left side and the inherent translucency of the 1 millimeter disc of Omnichroma. This is very important for this case since the thickness of the completed restoration will be around 1.5 millimeter in the middle third and 1 millimeter in the incisal third. If you were to use Omnichroma, you will definitely need to use their blocker and risk getting a lighter shade than needed since the thickness of the single shade to replace the enamel may not be sufficient to hide the white opaque color of the blocker. On the other hand, because its dentin like opacity, and minor translucency at thinner increments, Brain and Everglow A2B2 shade could be used to restore this case without the need of layering or using an opaque layer. Here is the Omnichroma technique directly from their webpage, recommending the use for the opaque blocker in anterior cases. And here is the completed case where we lengthen all teeth 1.5 to 2 millimeters without using any opaque layer, just simply using a single shade of Brilliant Everglow. Can the technique be more simple? This is the lingual view of the completed case where the red arrows represent the added length to all anterior teeth. In the last portion of my presentation, I want to address why Am I comparing Brilliant Everglow A2B2 with Omnichroma? In other words, why not compare A3D3 to Omnichroma? The number one reason is that when you take cross polarized photos, which by the way eliminate any glare created by the flashes, of cured Brilliant Everglow A2B2 right next to an A2 or an A3 Vita Pan shade tab, as seen on the photo, they both have a good match. 
Here you can see a 1.5 millimeter disc of cured Brilliant Everglow A2B2 on all A shades. In this photo, we can see how it matches the A2 tab and how it is acceptable in the A3 tab. Remember, the evidence I shared with you at the beginning of my presentation showed that 63.4% of our patients fall into these two shades. So by using A2B2, we can match more than half of our cases. Let's do the same comparison with Omnichroma. As you can see, the only good match is with A1, which only represents 11.5 of the patients that fall into the shade A group. So you should always expect a lighter restoration for your A2 and A3 cases. Finally, can you create lifelike restorations using Brilliant Everglow? In this exercise, I am going to make a tooth using 100% Brilliant Everglow composite. On the left photo, I have created a lingual shell using bleach translucent enamel shade. On the photo in the center, I have added a thin layer of bleach dentin, which will give me some opacity in the gingival and middle third. This layer stops at least one millimeter from the incisal edge so that I can achieve some translucent effect in that area. This is followed by adding a darker dentin shade like A3D3 so that we can recreate a color gradient effect. Then I am going to add A2B2 to the middle third and create three well defined mammalons in the incisal third. This is followed by adding a 0.5 layer of opaque bleach to recreate a halo effect as seen on young patients. In the space left between the mammalons, I am going to add some translucent enamel. And finally, I am going to add the last layer using bleach translucent enamel. All these shades are in the Brilliant Everglow kit. What the end result looks like? Well, Look at the beautiful effect we were able to create by layering multiple opacities and shades. You can't do this with a single shade.
We hope you found this information useful and applicable. Don't forget to visit our webpage, RomeroDentalSeminars.com, where you will find more clinical tips. Thank you for watching.